Now let's give some objections to the false doctrine. I'm going to say even farther, the doctrine of demons that says, oh, it's just gibberish. You're just making it up. It's not for today. The Holy Spirit baptism is not for today. Tongues are not for today. And listen, I'm just saying to the guys out there that will watch this video that are going to critique it and make clips and they they're fresh out of content because, you know, the heresy hunters that have literally said with their own mouth, oh, you guys are just speaking gibberish. First of all, you're saying millions of people that speak in tongues are all speaking gibberish. Second of all, that's scary to say that we're speaking gibberish and making it up. What a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God because you're not making fun of us. If we truly are praying in the Holy Spirit, which I know you don't believe we are, you're making fun of the Holy Spirit. So guys, I would run 100 miles an hour from anyone that says speaking in tongues is fake, gibberish made up. Not only they're extremely arrogant to tell millions of people that their encounter is false, that they have a false Holy Spirit, but man, you're disrespecting the Holy Ghost. It, I just hope you're right because it's going to be an awkward day on judgment when you stand before God and say, I mocked and made fun of the, the Holy Spirit praying. Imagine how terrible it would be to hear somebody in church praying. You know, you hear your grandmother praying in church and you get up on stage on your platform and you make a YouTube video and you start mocking your grandma. Oh, my grandma, she doesn't know how to pray. What a joke. She's making it up, babbling gibberish. Who would say, I would never make fun of my grandma. That's terrible. Okay, yet you're doing it to the Holy Spirit. Yet these guys on YouTube, these basement prophets on YouTube that you've never seen pray on their broadcast ever, I would question if they even do pray, are saying we're babbling and they're making fun of not us, the Holy Spirit praying through us. Because that's what scripture says. Scripture says, I'm going to show you, the Holy Spirit is praying through us. So what are some of the objections if they're so convinced? Let's go through some of these false doctrines, false teaching objections. False teaching, false doctrine number one which is the, is the worst one, especially if you know anything about the Bible, is tongues have ceased. This is what a lot of the cessationists, a lot of the reform theology, a lot of the John MacArthurites, this is what they teach. Tongues have ceased, they're no longer. And the only verse they use, because there's only one that would even minorly allude to it, and it doesn't even allude to it. I'm gonna show you and you're gonna be like, oh, that's dumb, that's not even what it means. They use 1 Corinthians 13, 8, that says tongues have ceased. This is the verse. Verse eight of 1 Corinthians 13. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Notice that they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, oh, interesting, knowledge. That's interesting. It's right by tongues. It will vanish away. So I want to show you guys this. This is their verse. This is their home run verse that the gifts have ceased. Look at how weak this argument is, how dumb it is. Knowledge will vanish away. Tongues will vanish away. And I mean, really, their knowledge must have vanished away for them to believe this. But look at verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10, this is their verse. But when that which is perfect has come, which that which is in part will be done away. Okay? Very simple. You read this and go, oh, that which is perfect is Jesus. When Jesus comes, we don't need to speak in tongues. We don't need to prophesy and we don't even need knowledge. It's going to vanish away because we'll have all understanding and knowledge of God. We'll know him fully, not looking through a mirror, but fully knowing him face to face. And, the, the, and it goes on and their case gets worse as the verse goes. But notice this. They say tongues have ceased, which if you read the text, it doesn't say tongues have ceased. It says tongues will. Tongues will. Not that they have ceased. Tongues will cease and so will knowledge. Is knowledge still here? Yes. Okay, so so are tongues. It's just basic logic. Prophecy shall fail and knowledge will vanish away. Shall. Prophecy shall. What does shall mean? Future event. Shall means future event. Tongues haven't ceased just as much as knowledge hasn't ceased. It's a false doctrine. I think it's absolutely demonic that teaches against the gifts, teaches against the Holy Spirit and against what God is doing. Who's that which is perfect? Now, what, what would they believe? They believe that which is perfect is the scripture, the canon. Now that we have the Bible, that's perfect. Okay, we know that's not true because we know that which is perfect is Jesus because later on it tells us in the same way we look at a mirror, one day we'll see him face to face. We don't see him face to face now. We see him through a mirror, but we will see him face to face. That which is perfect is not the Bible. The perfect is 
Jesus, okay? And mods, feel free to mute whoever. I don't know who you guys are saying is trolling, but whatever, whoever's trolling, just mute him. We're not, we don't care. Ban him, mute him, doesn't matter. Okay, so when, when will tongues cease? When are they no longer relevant? When Christ has come, that which is perfect. Has Christ returned yet? No, he hasn't. First Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 39. And this is what they won't tell you. They'll quote that, but they won't go one more chapter. And this is what Paul says. This is 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, covet to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking with tongues. Paul, what should we do? You should not forbid speaking in tongues. So to all of you out there that are like, we shouldn't speak in tongues, it ceased, false. Paul says, don't. I'm going to believe Paul over you. So that's number one objection, tongues have ceased. We already just proved that. That's ridiculous. Number two, only the apostles can pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. Brother Isaiah, what are you doing out here teaching people? You can lay hands and receive the Holy Ghost. Only the apostles can do that. Wrong. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And when Ananias went his way and entered the house, laying his hand on him, he said, who's doing it? Ananias. Lays his hands on who? Brother, pa Brother Saul. This is what he said. This is Acts 9. If you're taking notes, 17. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Whoa. So here we have Ananias laying his hands on Saul. And what does Saul get? The Holy Ghost. Who's Saul? Saul, I'm sorry. Who's Ananias? Ananias is not an apostle, not a prophet, not an evangelist, not a pastor, not a teacher. He's a lay person. Yet as a lay person, he's able to get the Holy Spirit. He's able to lay hands and people can receive the Holy Spirit. So there's your, only the apostles can lay hands. We don't need that no more because the apostles aren't around anymore. Wrong, 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 wrong. Number three, tongues are of the devil, brother. If you speak in tongues, you're going to be speaking a demonic language. Some Christians legitimately are afraid that if they pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God, or not God, the devil will give them a false Holy Spirit. And so what, a lot of these guys, I, I want to be careful not to label them too much. They will say tongues is of the devil. First of all, when you speak or pray in tongues, you don't desire to sin. And the only people that say this, ding, 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 are people that don't pray in tongues. Because you know if you prayed in tongues, when you pray in tongues, what happens? You desire to live holy. You desire to live righteous. You desire to walk circumspect before God. You desire to walk clean. You desire to walk pure. You desire God holiness, fasting, prayer. When I pray in tongues, oh, I want to read the word of God after. Oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost fire when I'm praying in tongues. No one goes and prays in tongues and says, oh, I really want to go do some demonic ritual now. No one prays in tongues and the devil gets glory for it, okay? And I'm going to, I'm, guys, I'm going to show you how to receive tongues, all of that. We're going to do that. Don't worry. But let me show you this. Tongues are of the devil. I'm scared. I'm going to get the false Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove to you definitively, you will not get a false tongues tonight. Luke eleven thirteen. 13, this is your verse. I'm sorry, Luke eleven eleven, and we'll go all the way to verse 13. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? Or what if a son asks for a fish? Will you give him a snake instead of a fish? Verse 12, what if a son asks for an egg? Will you give him a scorpion? Okay, verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So what is Jesus establishing? If you're asking for something good, I'm not going to give you something bad. Stop being afraid of, I'm going to get a false demonic tongues. I promise you won't. I promise you won't. The only people that speak in demonic tongues are people that intentionally want to. No one's accidentally out here speaking in a demonic tongue. So how much more does God love you? What do we have to do? We have to ask. I'll share that more later. Okay. That's number three, false doctrine, tongues are of the devil. No. Number four, it's not for everyone, brother. O have you guys heard this? Only some people can have this gift, okay? I'm going to show you why this is wrong. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall cast out. And they will speak with new tongues. So when people say it's not God's will for everyone, they usually imply, you know, this is for the elite Christians and only those special Christians get it and some second class Christians aren't allowed to have it. That's not, that's not true. 
Now, the objection they use is 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 28. So let's be fair and look at the verse they'd use in saying it's not for everybody. Watch this. Verse 27 of 1 Corinthians, New King James Version. Um, verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, okay? What is he appointed? First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and the varieties of tongues. And I want you to notice something, chat, because we're doing a deep dive here. The varieties of tongues. You see that? Later, I'm going to show you, Paul calls it different kinds of tongues. So the idea that it's just speaking in tongues only or foreign languages only is not founded. It's unfounded. Look at what Paul says, the varieties of tongues. What is Paul talking about? Ministries, okay? What are these that Paul's describing? Ministries. Apostle is a ministry. Prophet is a ministry. Teacher is a ministry. Working of miracles is referring to a miracle ministry. Gifts of healings is referring to a ministry. Helps is a ministry. Administrations. What is administrations, chat? A ministry. So Paul says administrations, helps, gifts of healings, and then he says a variety of tongues. So varieties of tongues in context is ministries. So he says, are we all doing these things? Verse 27 says, you're the body of Christ and members individually. Each member has their own ministry or job to perform. Okay. Like what 1 Corinthians 12, 29 verse 30 says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles. I'm using what they would use to say, you're not all supposed to get this. Are all workers of miracles. Do all have the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? These questions, obviously the answer is no. Not all operate in these ministries. Look at this. Now let me show you. It's a Now is this talking about what we're talking about tonight? Your private prayer life. That's what we're focusing on, praying in tongues. Is this talking about your private prayer life? No. It's talking about your job or ministry within the body of Christ. So not everyone is called to these ministries whether apostles or varieties of tongues. So not everyone is called to stand on a stage publicly and speak in tongues and then interpret to a body of believers. Are you guys catching this? We're not all called to that. This is not saying we can't all pray in tongues. If you have the Holy Spirit, I want to ask you this question. If you have the Holy Spirit and everyone in the Bible, just stay with me, spoke in tongues that got the Holy Spirit. Just stay with me. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you've been sealed and promised. I've already shared in that scripture. Why would the Holy Spirit not want to pray out of you? You're like, well, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't want to pray out of me. Why not? Why would he say, I don't, I don't want it for you. Now, do we all have the ministry job? No, we don't. Okay. So it's not for everybody. That's just not what the Bible says. Mark 16 says in, they will speak with new tongues. And then Paul again says, I want all of you to speak in tongues. Look at this. Look at what 1 Corinthians 14, 5 says. This is Paul. I wish you all would speak with tongues. So Paul's, guys, this is not disputable. This is not subjective. It's objective. Paul's desire, he wrote this down, is I wish all of you would speak in tongues. That's literally what Paul says. So do we know the heart of God? Do we have to sit here and go, I don't really know if God wants me to have this. We know the heart of God. The heart of God is, I wish all of you spoke in tongues. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God's inspired, the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write this. So imagine the Holy Spirit saying it if Paul wrote it. I want all of you, God says, to speak with tongues. Paul said it, inspired by the Holy Ghost. So this is Paul. I wish all of you would speak with tongues. Okay. Now, last objections, number five. This is an interesting one. They say it was always a foreign language, never a heavenly language. Now, the Bible does talk about speaking in tongues of angels which alludes to heavenly language, but I want to go into that. I want to give you one simple verse that disproves that it's always a foreign language. And doc, Dr. Michael Brown has great debates on this. Uh, in my opinion, he runs circles around guys that say it's only a foreign language. It's always another language. It's never supernatural. It's never um, heavenly. It's never, look at this. I'm going to disprove this right now. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Look at what it says. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Okay, so remember, 
The idea is it's always only a foreign language. It's never supernatural. It's never tongues of angels. It's never the Holy Spirit praying out of you, okay? First Corinthians 14, 2. So keep that in your mind. That's the objection. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. If it's always only a foreign language, someone in the world would understand him. But Paul says, no one understands him. But in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, okay? Now, I told you guys my testimony. I got tongues the night I got saved. I was speaking in it, and I've spoken it probably every day for the last 13 years. It's been life-changing, and I'm going to tell you why it's been so life-changing. If God did it for me, I believe he wants to do it for you. Those are five objections. I think I disproved those with scripture. I mean, it's super clear.